In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about pancreatitis. Before we do that, I wanna show you really quickly where the pancreas is. It's right behind the stomach. I'm gonna flip this around. You can see it connects to the GI system, the GI tract via this duct system. So it feeds into there via this pancreatic duct, and then it's connected to the gallbladder via this common bile duct. And that's gonna be really important as we go through here and talk about this. But before we begin this lesson, let's talk really quickly about the basic functions of the pancreas. It's like we always say, once you understand how something works, it's much easier to understand what happens when it's not working well. So the pancreas is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland. Endocrine means it secretes hormones directly into the bloodstream. These hormones in the pancreas are insulin and glucagon. Now you know this, but insulin decreases blood glucose and glucagon increases blood glucose. Exocrine means it secretes chemicals out into the GI tract. And that's, you can see that connection right there. With the pancreas, it secretes amylase, which helps with the digestion of carbs. It secretes lipase, which helps with the digestion of fats. Trypsin, which helps with the digestion of protein. And nuclease, which helps with nucleic acid. So you can see really quickly how important the pancreas is with nutrition and absorption of nutrients and food uh, that we take. So pancreatitis is an inflammation of the pancreas. And that's the whole point of this itis here. It's the, the pancreas becoming inflamed. And what's really unique here with pancreatitis is that it results in this autodigestion. If all these digestive enzymes can't get out of the pancreas, they actually kind of turn back on itself and begin to digest the pancreas itself. Now, the most common causes, the two most common causes are chronic alcoholism and gallbladder disease. We talked earlier about how it connects with the gallbladder, but you can see here where this pancreatic duct connects with this bile duct right before it enters the duodenum. And if there's gallstones or if there's inflammation right here in these bile ducts, it can obstruct this pancreatic duct as well. Your patients might also have hyperlipidemia, they might have peptic ulcer disease, or they could have pancreatic cancer as well. All of these things can cause pancreatitis, but the ones I really want you to remember are chronic alcoholism and gallbladder disease. Now for our assessment, the number one symptom of pancreatitis is severe, severe abdominal pain. This is extremely painful. And the pain is usually gonna be mid epigastric, left upper quadrant. So you see here, this is where the pain is going to be in this left upper quadrant, right where the pancreas sits. Now they're also going to have nausea and vomiting, weight loss. They aren't able to digest and absorb nutrients. So of course they're going to have this weight loss. Other things you might see are going to be elevated white blood cell, bilirubin, remember how it's connecting to the, the gallbladder, elevated ALP, amylase and lipase. Your body's not able to use these enzymes. So they're going to start to increase. Two other things you wanna see, and if you see these on a test or anywhere else, or you see it on a patient, think pancreatitis. Our colon sign, which is this bruising right here below the umbilicus, like you can see on this patient, and gray Turner sign, which you can see a little bit right over here, is this bruising over on the flank. Now, lastly, another thing I want you to keep in mind is they're gonna have steatorrhea, which is fatty, foul-smelling stools. You're not getting all this bile out into the GI system, and so you're gonna have changes in your stools. So our number one goal with medical management is actually to decrease or suppress the amount of enzymes that the pancreas secretes to try to limit this autodigestion. If we don't decrease what's going out, all these enzymes are gonna start working back on the pancreas and digesting it. Now, we're also gonna make the patient MPO, and then you might put an NG tube, you know, NG tube goes down into the stomach. And, and this is going to help decrease gastric acid secretion that's going out into the, the GI tract, which means less pancreatic secretions. So when they're MPO, it's important to make sure that they're getting enough hydration. They're not going to be drinking. Um, and then we also might put them on total parenteral nutrition, which is just uh, nutri nutrients going in to the, the venous system. Now, as far as medications, we're going to be giving our patients analgesics. Remember, this is extremely painful. Then we also are probably going to give them uh, 
H2 receptor blockers. We'll probably give them proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. And, and one really, really interesting medication that we're going to give these patients is we're going to actually give them anticholinergics. Now, think your fight or flight system. Um, we want to try to decrease these gastric secretions. So we can decrease gastric motility. We can decrease gastric activity by giving them these anticholinergics. It's going to cause less stimulation. That's actually what we want. And then, of course, keep in mind that the pancreas controls insulin and glucagon. So these patients are going to need to be given these meds as well to control their blood sugars, and then they're going to be need to be given um, pancreatic enzymes on top of that. Now, as far as different procedures that we can do, there's this one called ERCP, which stands for Endoscopic Retrograde Choleangiopancreatography. Now, what does that mean? Really what we do is we insert an endoscope right down here, and then we go backwards up into this bile duct, and we're looking for any sort of gallstones or any sort of inflammation or anything that could be happening in this bile duct. Anytime you see coli, think uh, gallbladder, um, and then that retrograde part means that it comes down past here and then looks back up. So that's really what we're trying to do here. We're trying to see if anything's going on there that we can take out. You could even take out gallstones uh, by doing that. Another thing we might do is a cholecystectomy. Cholecystectomy, the ectomy part, means that we're just taking out that gallbladder so that we're not having all those problems anymore. Then there's also pancreatomy. Pancreatomy, of course, means taking the pancreas out entirely. Now, what do you guys think is going to happen if we take that pancreas out? Remember, it secretes all those digestive enzymes, insulin, glucose, amylase, all that stuff. So if we take those out immediately, these patients are going to immediately become instantly, they're going to become diabetic. So they're going to have to have massive changes in their life, needing insulin and glucagon, and then all these digestive enzymes as well. One other thing we can do, which is a kind of a complex procedure, is something called uh, the Whipple procedure. And this is usually done with patients who have um, pancreatic cancer. And pretend this, you can kind of see it on the screen there, pretend this is a lesion, like a, a tumor inside the pancreas. What they're actually going to do is they're going to take off that piece of the pancreas. Now you can see if we do that, we've severed that connection to the duodenum. So what they're going to do is they're going to cut off a portion of the duodenum as well. They're going to take this out and then they're going to, so that you kind of have your, your intestine here. So let's say it's like that. So you're going to feed in your, uh, your bile. You're going to feed in what's left of the pancreas. And then you're going to have the stomach kind of connect a little bit further down. So food can come in. And that's going to stimulate all these enzymes and things to come down. So that's that's kind of a more advanced procedure for people who have uh, pancreatic cancer. And we'll talk later about some of the things you can do with those patients. So let's talk about some of our priority nursing concepts for these patients. Like I've been saying this whole time, it's pretty obvious what these are going to be. But the first one is going to be comfort. And then nutrition, and, <laughs> and then nutrition, then patient education. So why comfort? Remember, this is very, very, very painful. And so we have to make sure that we're, we're doing everything we can to make these patients more comfortable. Nutrition, they've lost the ability to digest and absorb nutrients. So they're probably gonna be on TPN and, and IV medications. So we gotta make sure they're getting proper nutrition. Then patient education. This is a massive lifestyle change for these patients, especially if they've had that Whipple procedure or had part of their pancreas removed. It's a huge lifestyle change. And so it's incredibly important that we educate these patients Keep this in mind, is that they've got to stop drinking alcohol. This is very damaging uh, to the GI system. And it's for a lot of patients, it might be what caused this in the first place. So they've got to stop uh, taking that in. Now, if you need additional help with different interventions and, and rationales and things that we would do with these patients, be sure to check out the care plan for pancreatitis attached to this lesson. So what are the key points? These are the linchpins I want you to remember about pancreatitis. First of all, it's inflammation of the pancreas can lead to autodigestion and loss of function of the pancreas. It could be acute or chronic. If it's acute, it could resolve on its own. If it's chronic, we don't really have a chance of that resolving. And it can most often be caused by alcoholism or gallbladder disease. This is going to be extremely painful. If you remember anything about pancreatitis, think pain, and you're going to see that abdominal bruising and, and on the flank. Um, and think nausea, vomiting, think weight loss. We don't have these pancreatic enzymes 
that's going to be a problem. So things we can do, possible surgery, we can remove the pancreas, but that's obviously going to equal lifetime medications. And then nutrition is a huge priority. We'll give them IV hydration, TPN, and have a loss of these digestive enzymes. So just think of it like that. Pancreas is inflamed, starts to eat itself. That's painful. We got to give it new digestive enzymes to this patient once we take these things out. All right, guys, that's it for pancreatitis. Be sure to use the, the quizzes, the cheat sheets, the care plans, everything attached to this lesson. But like we always say here, go out and be your best self. Happy nursing.